For the sermon today, I want to examine this passage that Sarita read for us from the book of Philippians. And in one sense, uh, if you, those of you who remember the sermon of our elder Franklin Poppins last Sunday, I am sort of looking at, uh, or rather focusing on a similar theme. It's more or less a continuation of what our elder had preached last time. And there is a very powerful reality that comes through these scriptures that we read. And I want to focus on one specific aspect. And for that, uh, let me just go ahead and share my screen. If you notice the screen, of course, you will wonder why I have such a complex background. Uh, but uh, the subject also is fairly complex. And so maybe there is a matching there that goes on. Uh, but the title for the sermon today is The Self-Emptying, The Self-Giving Love of God. Okay, so I want to look at this reality that we are able to get from the reading today about Jesus Christ, who emptied himself, as it says, and there is one particular uh, uh, phrase that talks about that, and he emptying himself to become a human being, right? And interestingly enough, we are already into October, and very soon uh, we will be moving into the Advent season, uh, and we will begin to think about the incarnation and Christ coming to the earth and taking on our humanity and, of course, what he accomplished for us in his humanity. And so as we look at these uh, aspects, let's look at that scripture once again. And I want to bring uh, this particular point, which I was mentioning a little earlier. Going back to the reading, this is Philippians chapter 2. It begins, in, in, I'm beginning in verse 5. It says, your relationships with one another have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. I'm reading from a different version, an NIV version. Notice in verse 6 it says, who being in, the, in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Now, who is this talking about? Obviously, it is talking about Jesus Christ. And we know that Christ was the Son of God. When it says Son of God, he was God himself. As it says in verse 6, being in very nature God. Now, being God, he did not cling to his privileges as God, as it says. He did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. In other words, Jesus Christ was not, as the Son of God and as God, was not afraid of reducing himself to a human. Uh, he wanted to use his being God for the benefit of others, to think about others, to think about his creation. And like Selena told us, we have become children of God because of Jesus. And so Jesus was so very much thinking about us and not just he being God, but he was looking at how he can use being God to our own advantage, not for his own advantage. So he wanted to help, even if it meant he needed to limit himself. In his, God, in his Godship or in his good uh, go, uh, Godness, if I can use those words, uh, may not be very accurate. So, uh, being in the very nature of God, what did he do as he thought about us? Verse 7 says, he made, rather he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant. Now, that's the phrase I want, I want to sort of uh, focus on. It says he made himself nothing. 
In other words, the original Greek, which I will explain in a moment, says that he emptied himself. He, or you could say self-emptied. So being God, being the king, being the Lord, he was willing to become a servant. I don't know if you remember, there was a story we used to read. I remember that story. It used to be called The Prince and the Pauper. And uh, this story mentions or narrates about how a prince exchanges his place with a very poor person called a pauper. And he takes on or he becomes the pauper. Uh, and experiences life as a pauper, even though he was a prince. And for some reason, as we think about Jesus being God, but taking on the very nature of a servant reminds me of that story. But here we are told that Jesus voluntarily gave up the privileges of being a king, being God. He imposed, in other words, a self-limitation upon himself. And, of course, we know, as it says in the later part of verse 7, being made in human likeness. He became a human being, entered the created order. He subjected himself to the limitations of being a human, of humanness. To such an extent where that he would even experience death, like it says in verse 8. Be by becoming obedient to death. And it's not just uh, death. I mean, here is a God who cannot die, who lives eternally, willing to experience death and even death on a cross, as it says. It is, I mean, dying is one, is one experience, but dying on a cross, and as we will uh, recognize from the old covenant uh, perspective, to die on a cross or on a tree was actually a curse. To die like a common criminal. Can you imagine how Jesus was emptying himself to experience all of this? All right. So uh, Jesus Christ, as it says, was willing to become vulnerable. We go back to verse 7. He made himself nothing. He was willing to be so vulnerable that he was willing to give himself even to uh, be abused and to be beaten and to finally experience death. Let's explore that this self empty a little bit more. And uh, if you notice on the screen at this time, this word self emptying comes from a Greek word. The, the root of the word is kino or it can be translated kenosis. That's the Greek word for empty. It would mean the renunciation of the divine nature, right? It is a self-limitation that Jesus Christ imposes upon himself. Uh, the self empty of Jesus own will and becoming entirely receptive to God's will. In other words, if you remember, Jesus prays, let not my will, but your will be done. So Jesus was uh, limiting himself so much that he was willing to submit himself to the will of the Father and not allow his will to come in the way. Right Now, this is where we get also uh, terms like kenotic theology or kenotic ethics. Uh, and there are various variations of this. And now at this moment, you may be wondering, why am I getting into so much of theology? Uh, please bear with me as I talk as a theo theologian, because there is a need for us to recognize this. But I will also speak as a pastor. And past, the pastoral perspective is to connect all of this with our lives. So the theology is, as a theologian, I want you to understand the complexity of this particular, uh, you know, concept of this phrase. But as a pastor, I want to begin to connect it 
to our lives today. And maybe I would request the speaking team, those of you who are attending, uh, please take note. So when you speak, remember, you must speak as a theologian, but also as a pastor. Uh, don't just be a theologian, but also move on to be a pastor. All right. Now, if you notice, once again, let's go back to the, uh, uh, the term that we were discussing. self empty. Jesus Christ imposes or, or experiences this interesting phrase called self empty. But you know, one of the problems that this particular uh, concept uh, poses uh, is that it has given rise to some wrong thinking. And I want to make sure that we don't think of this self emptying that Christ experienced in the wrong way. What is the meaning of self emptying? Like I said, some, some uh, wrong theologies have come and I should say heretical teachings have come and I'd like to just list some of those so that we don't fall into the, uh, into the uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, the, the, the ditch of having these erroneous teachings. The word kenosis, which means self-emptying, does not mean that the Son, the Son of God, ceased to be God. That would be a heretical teaching. So when Jesus self empties or, you know, uh, empties himself, it does not mean he stopped being God. Secondly, it does not mean that he has become a lesser God. Right. Uh, there is no lesser God. God is God. It also we also have to take into account that he did not exchange his divinity for humanity. All right. Uh, he did not uh, sort of uh, lose his divinity so that he may become human. And two more thoughts. Self-emptying or the skinosis that he went through does not mean he became half human and half God. And finally, uh, it does not mean that he only appeared as human, which was actually a heretical teaching of the Gnostic, because this was a Gnostic teaching that was in the early ages after the church, uh, you know, uh, came into existence. So I want us to understand that the self-emptying uh, experience of Jesus Christ, the kenosis that he went through, does not mean any of this. So these are all heretical teachings. Now, let us be absolutely clear: what is the theology what is the doctrine that we believe and the doctrine is this that jesus christ was fully god and fully human which means to say his self-emptying does not mean that he stopped being god he remained god while he took on the fullness of uh, being human now why do i say this well a scripture very clearly explains that uh, in Colossians 2 and verse 9, it says, For in Christ, all the fullness of, of the deity lives in bodily form. So this very clearly clarifies the self-emptying experience, the kenosis of Jesus did not mean that he, he uh, gave up his divini uh, uh, divinity or deity. The fullness of being God was also in bodily form. And that is the orthodox doctrine, the belief and the faith that we adhere to and we uh, believe in. Uh, if uh, I can give you a little bit more theology, uh, this is called the hypostatic union. Jesus Christ being fully God and fully human, uh, the union of Christ's humanity and divinity in one hypostasis. If you remember, we had discussed that sometime back in the existence of Jesus Christ, fully God and fully human being. Uh, now you might say, well, you know, I mean, how do you understand that? How do you explain that? How is it logical for somebody to be fully God and also fully human? Well, you know, that's where the mystery is. And sometimes we have to embrace the mystery. Uh, mystery does not mean that it is illogical. It is beyond our human logic. All right. It's like saying, and uh, those of you who are, phys uh, you know, 
physics majors or engineers might understand what is light you know light that we have uh, some people say it's a wave some people say it's a particle some people say it's both scientists say that light is wave a wave and a particle now can we understand that and we can't understand these human perspectives or human you know phenomena how much more difficult it is for us to understand the mystery of god so we have to leave it as a mystery but let me go back now to this once again the self emptying the kenosis that we in greek that uh, we have been uh, uh, we have been uh, you know talking about and i frankly speaking i uh, find that this word self emptying maybe doesn't give us uh, a full understanding i feel that it can cause some problem so i would like to from a trinitarian perspective and that is what you know our focus as has been over the several years now from a trinitarian perspective i feel we can bring in a better expression uh and that is my view by the way uh, in my own view i feel that uh, there is a better expression and that better expression is the following as you see on the screen self giving right self emptying can bring some misunderstanding but self giving perhaps can give us a better perspective of the kenosis that jesus christ experienced one theologian said the following he said a uh, jesus christ in the kenosis he poured himself into humanity in other words his deity was being poured into the humanity the flesh that he took on and i thought that was an interesting way of putting it all right so self giving is what i would think is uh, perhaps a better expression and what is this maybe i should ask why did jesus christ go through the self giving why did he go through this kenotic experience of well self self emptying or a better put self giving and i want to just give you some few thoughts on that why does god give himself because god is love and that is our trinitarian understanding that the very essence of god is love because he is love he is self giving right love by definition by its very essence and nature is self giving secondly why does god go through the why did jesus go through the kenotic experience because that's the only way to know the father the only way for us to know the father was for jesus to give himself to us and take on our humanity you know even in a human experience the only way that you can know somebody else is to give yourself to the person right there has to be some kind of a mutual self giving that's the only way we can understand or come to know the other person take the example of husband and wife if the husband and wife are unable to give each other to themselves to each other uh where is the knowing we have a gap in the knowing and that's perhaps one of the reasons why we have so much of problem in the marital situation today that husbands or wives are not self giving enough and they then experience a gap in their knowing of each other parent and child how much time do parents spend with their children uh to know you have to give yourself to your child how many times we hear of children saying i mean my parent didn't come for this show or this activity and he didn't take me there or did you know unless you give yourself you, it is very difficult to know one another and of course as friends uh, as friends we know that unless we self give we never know who the other person is one more point with regards to self giving as jesus goes through the self giving experience he reveals god's nature of humility and being a servant king right uh because uh he gave himself to us 
it once again shows who this God is. God is humble. He is, he takes the risk of becoming a servant, even though he is a king. That's the vulnerability that God Almighty, you know, experiences and exposes himself to. All right. So what does all of this have to do with us? Uh, so, so far, I've been talking with a theological hat. Now, allow me to wear my pastoral hat. And we want to ask the question, what relevance does this have for us? And for that, we must go back to the scripture because it very clearly says in the reading, what, what relevance does this have for us? And in verse 5 of Philippians chapter 2, it says, in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, right? What is the saying? Just as Jesus experienced the kenosis, the self-emptying, or better yet, the self-giving, we are admonished or perhaps we are encouraged to have the same attitude, the same mindset in our relationships with one another, right? Uh, the apostle is telling us have the same self-giving attitude with you know one another that Jesus Christ had for us. Become, in other words, like Christ in your dealings with others. And I think we all understand and know that Christianity is an invitation to enjoy the self-giving of Jesus Christ. As Jesus Christ gives himself to us, we are invited to experience him and to enjoy him. And while we do that, we are to adopt this mindset where we also give ourselves to one another. When we don't accept the self-giving of Christ, it becomes very difficult then for us to give ourselves to others. Or we block that relationship and then, of course, we experience relational difficulties right uh, so becoming self-giving toward others we then know more and more of Christ uh, we know we will know one another more and of course if you remember the great commandment that Jesus quoted loving God loving neighbor and all of this is encapsulated in this kenotic experience of self-giving. Now the question is, how can we have the same mind of Christ? How can we, I mean, he, we are being encouraged to have a similar mindset, but how do we do that? What, 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 what am I to do to manifest this mindset, this attitude that Jesus Christ has? And so the apostle Paul gives us a few thoughts and I'll pick up once again, some of the verses from the reading. How do we have the self-giving love of Jesus Christ? The first point I'd like to go to is, first and foremost, are you available for others? Notice the apostle says in verse four, Philippians two, not looking to your own interest, but each of you to the interests of others. It is basically telling us, are you available for others? Are you aware of others? Would you want to Recognize that others are there and have needs. And would you volunteer to perhaps if it is possible to fulfill a need, are you available for them? All right. Uh, Jesus Christ made himself available. Even though he was God, like the scripture says, he did not just hang on to be God. He decided to be available for us. And even if it meant that he had to curtail his divinity, even if he had to sort of, uh, uh, you know, limit himself being God, he made himself available to others. And so the question we have to ask is, one of the ways we can be self-giving is to basically ask, are we available for others? Are we available for our own family, our own flesh and blood, our own brethren in the church, and for those around us when we see need? 
are we available that's a self kenotic uh, attitude that we can adopt from christ uh, second point how we can we have the self giving love of christ is to ask ourselves the question are we willing to kenosis ourselves <laughs> you know kenosis means empty are you willing to empty yourself verse 3 in uh, philippians chapter 2 tells us do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit what is it telling us it is telling us to empty yourself of selfish ambition it is telling us to empty ourselves of vain conceit. Are we willing to do that? Are we willing to empty ourselves of selfishness, of conceit, of malice, of bitterness, of hatred? Are we willing to empty ourselves of these attitudes that cause so much of barriers, you know, in relationships, right? Um, and remember, you know, every time we do that, we are making ourselves vulnerable. And that is what Christ did. He made himself vulnerable by, by emptying himself and taking on humanity. He knew that he is going to make himself vulnerable. He is make, going to make himself a target of attack from the others. And of course, we know that ultimately he had to pay for, for the whole thing with his life. And so when we do, when we empty ourselves, we are actually making ourselves vulnerable. Can you make yourself vulnerable? Are you afraid to make yourself vulnerable? And maybe I should say this, that every time you and I decide to love, every time we decide to love, we make ourselves vulnerable. You make yourself open to some kind of uh, offense, some kind of pain, some kind of attack, right? Jesus was willing to do that. Are you and I willing to empty ourselves and make ourselves vulnerable? Interestingly enough, the apostle also tells us that it is in the weakness of Christ that he became strong. And sometimes, it is in us, in our self-giving, in our vulnerable state, sometimes we become strong, right? As it says that the weakness of God is stronger than man. So are we willing to make ourselves, you know, or rather empty ourselves? And one more point uh, to leave you with, are you willing to be humble? As it says in verse 3, Philippians 2, rather in humility. Value others above yourself. Maybe a better way to talk about humility, which is another hallmark of Christian behavior, is to say, you see, humility is not thinking less of yourself, right? Or debasing yourself. That is not what humility is. Humility is thinking less of yourself, right? In other words, you are not only filled with thoughts about yourself, you are willing to think about others. That is basically humility. Humility is to think about others, not just yourself, your interests, your you know, situation. What about the others? Well, that's what Christ did. In the kenosis, he was willing to think of others. Well, this is one way, or this is, this is three ways we can have the attitude of Jesus Christ. But then, of course, you might say, uh, oh, we've heard this before. I mean, uh, you know, uh, this is this typical Christian perspective of being good to others, uh, don't do harm to others. But, you know, I want to ask the question, why is this important? Why is this thinking why is the apostle telling us to think like christ and to be willing to do the kenotic experience why is self-emptying and self-giving love important and i want to leave you with one last slide as we uh, conclude our, uh, our preaching today 
Why should self-giving be a way of life for us as disciples of Jesus Christ? Right? Why should uh, we think about and have the attitude of Jesus Christ? I want to leave you with a series of scriptures. Each one will be connect, not not scriptures, but but sayings, and hopefully they will connect. Let's not forget that Jesus Christ said, "I am the way, the truth, and the life." He is the one who went through the kenotic experience. And it is he who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The second point I would like you to consider is, basically, as we consider the first point, the second point is that the, old, the only ultimate truth is Christ. If Jesus can declare that he is indeed the way, the truth, and the life, the ultimate truth is indeed Jesus Christ. Let's connect up that to the third point. The only formula, in other words, to abundant life and truth is to be Christ-like. If Christ is the way to truth and life, and the ultimate truth is Christ, the only formula for the abundant life that we should experience and want to experience is to become Christ-like. And if we are going to be Christ-like, is to be self-giving, is to be self-emptying. Right? Uh, so why should we be self-giving? Because of Jesus Christ, because of his experience, because of his example, because he calls us to an abundant life. And the only way we can be experiencing that abundant life is to be Christ-like and to have the same attitude as, as that of Jesus Christ. I want to end by telling you about uh, uh, you know, an experience I had many, many years back. I was a, as a pastoral training, training under a senior pastor after I had finished my theological studies. And you know, uh, being, uh, uh, being, uh, being trained under a senior, an experienced pastor, one of the things we did was to make house calls, to go and visit families, and especially to go and to provide counseling. Uh, for those who requested it. And on one day, one occasion, we were to visit this mother, a single mother who had a child and there was no husband. And she was in distress. She was going through some very difficult experiences in life, trying to raise a child in a very difficult location, uh, experiencing the shortcomings of you know not being able to earn enough and and she was a member of the congregation where i had uh, trained and as we sat down with her her child was in the next room watching television i think it was uh she was trying to uh, sort of pour out her difficulties and all the traumas she had experienced, all the difficulties she was going through. And she couldn't help but become, become so emotional about it that she started weeping. She started crying. And audibly, I mean, the, uh, the passion she was sharing with us was so deep that she just couldn't contain herself. She was just weeping. And interestingly enough, a few moments into that uh, situation, this child of hers, a five-year-old son, walks in and he brings a handkerchief and gives it to the mother and sits by the mother. Uh, and, I, and we were absolutely, you know, shocked to see how this five-year-old child became so sensitive to the crying of his mother, that he found a handkerchief somewhere, brought it to the mother and sat with her. And I can't help as I think about that experience, that the three points that I mentioned, first point is he was available for his mother. And I was just thinking how that, how he practiced a self-emptying of himself. He was available for his mother, right? Um, he was willing to put 
you know, he was willing to empty himself in the sense that he was watching television. He was willing to put that aside and think about the mother's need. And he put that aside and came to comfort his mother. And of course, it was so obvious that we could see his humility. And remember what I said about humility. Humility is not thinking less of yourself. It is thinking of yourself less. This little child, five-year-old son, thought about his mother more than he thought about himself. A simple incident, a powerful example of kenotic, self-emptying, self-giving love. And no wonder Jesus asked us to become like little children. Brethren, brothers and sisters, as we celebrate Christ's self-giving and his self-emptying love for us, let us pray that God will make us like him so that we can reflect Jesus Christ's attitude, his nature, and his perspective in our own life.